responsible for the driving dynamics of the three series. So I know this car from the very first scratch on, from basis layout, what kind of tires, what kind of front and rear axle we need, up to the final applications we are now doing on the test tracks and on the race tracks all around the world. Starting in the beginning, the goal of the car, what should it feel like, was always quite clear. Thomas always ordered the Yaltek and Sports Sedan. The trick is how to do it. So I'd like to discover with you now in the next couple of minutes how we did achieve this ultimate sports sedan, which is to be driven effortless fast, was always the title of the car. So, first of all, we need again excellent vehicle DNA, which means the weight distribution of the car is perfectly balanced from front to rear axle. We're speaking for both cars who've been driving up until now, the 320 diesel and the 330i, perfect 50-50 weight distribution. And although the car is slightly larger in every dimension, you can see the track width is larger, the wheel base is larger by 41 millimeters, the car is slightly higher even, although it's bigger in every dimension, it's lighter. The colleagues already mentioned the 55 kilograms, which come out of one single component, but the rear differential, of course, contributes with around 7 kilograms, and other parts, which are now used of aluminium, are quite smart and intelligent used in order to contribute to this weight reduction. And not only the weight itself, but also the weight distribution in the car helps us with the yaw inertia, so the car is more agile, all the day being bigger. What's very important for me, the center of gravity is lowered around 10 millimeters, combined again with the wider track, is of course excellent for driving dynamics. So we have the vehicle DNA enabling us to do an agile car. And what do we need to do a precise car? Precision always comes to something that does not change. So there is those two words, stiffer chassis, sounds quite easy. But stiffer chassis does not only mean the parts in the chassis are stiffer for each component itself, but also the combination of chassis and body combined is stiffer. We learned throughout the last years to optimize the stiffness of chassis and body combined by simulation tools and powerful computing. Basically, from the rail surface, through the front and rear knuckle, front and rear axle carrier, subframe, steering column, throughout the body up to the driver and what the driver should feel in each driving maneuver. Different driving maneuvers simulating and hence being, opti uh, being able to optimize the stiffness of chassis and body combined, as I said. <coughs> Just to give you some numbers, the optimization resulted in an increase of stiffness at the top mount, where the McPherson strut is connected to the body, in an increase of stiffness of 50% compared to predecessor, and this number, 50% stiffer, also applies for the lower part of the front axle, where the wishbone is connected to the subframe, the front axle carrier, but it is locally stiffer, again 50%. Stiffness means not only the static stiffness, but also the dynamic stiffness, speaking of acoustics. So, if we are doing, as we have been doing in those cars, we did the rubber bushings stiffer, at the same time not sacrificing the rolling comfort of the car, enabled by the stiffer subframe and the stiffer chassis and body combined. So, those two words, stiffer chassis, is a huge lot of work, which resulted in this driving sensation you've been experiencing in the last days. So, the basis for the vehicle mass distribution and the stiffer chassis and body enable us to go into details of the front and rear axle and into details of the tubes. And first of all, let me show you one system which is included now in every basis suspension and every sport suspension, the hydraulic stop dampers. Those are available, as I say, from the base on, so every basis suspension includes them and every sport suspension. There is, so to say, a damper inside the damper, and some of you already asked me, I do have some with me to share how they work. So, 
those are the dampers, one for the front axle and one for the rear axle. The question is again, why do we use them? And let's start with the front axle. At the front axle, you normally have the problem if you're going over a speed bump, that the car tends to throw you out at the front. So we had to integrate some kind of additional hydraulic which stops this rebound. I'd like to draw it for you because it's more simply if I draw a small sketch at the front axle. We have the normal inner tube of a damper. You all know the piston rod and the valving underneath. And as I said, we do have the demand of additional damping forces in rebound. So we integrated an additional piston ring who dives into a slightly younger inner cone, it's a plastic intake, I'll show you in a second. And of course, as soon as this piston ring dives into the inner cone, we have additional damping forces. The additional piston ring is to be seen here. This is the piston ring on the piston rod itself and the smaller intake is up there this is the black plastic which is slightly tailored that it's not a hard intake but a smooth intake and the way we use it is not only a final stop some competitors do use it only for the last 20 millimeters of wheel stroke we use it already 20 millimeters to 30 millimeters from normal right height so if you start your drive, your normal high drive, if you have some small undulations, you come near to those as soon as the rear becomes more rough, you are completely helped by those rebound systems. At the rear axle, we do not need that much of a rebound addition. We are talking about a free series. We could put into the trunk around five or six hundred kilograms of extra weight. Now it's uh, five or six hundred kilograms of water. This evening maybe five or six hundred kilograms of wine. After the rest, and you do not normally need that much of a rebound addition, but as a compression addition. So basically, we switch it the valving around, and at the rear axle, again with the normal piston rod and valving underneath. As I said, we need more the help of an additional compression force. So we integrated here a smaller intake on the lower part of the damper and we mounted underneath the normal valving a second piece with a second valving and again quite simple as we dive into this younger inner case we have additional battery forces again around 20 to 30 millimeters of normal right height on. So if you're going under over undulated roads, you have 40 to 50 percent more damping forces as soon as you are in the intake, which is quite a lot. Of course, it both helps us to be softer around the center, and as soon as the body starts to move further, we have additional damping forces in helping us to do an absolute sovereign body control, which is quite smooth and without any sharp edges during damping. Any questions so far concerning those smart systems? Uh, do you have uh, bump stops uh, as well? This kind of suspensions? Or? Of course we do have the um, polyurethane bump stops. Yeah. yeah, and we use them that still quite active as tuning parameters. So we did not take them away as only final of uh, bump stops. We use them the way we did for tuning. So two additional parameters we can use during application. So, as I said, those are available for every basic suspension and every sport suspension. But now let's only talk about suspension because it's, again, it would be too easy. We like, I uh, prefer to say package, a sports package or a basis package because now we link every sports suspension always with a variable sports steering, sports package. So the steering helps us in a sports package again to be more agile.
because the very resilient ratio is even around the center, more direct than the predecessor. The predecessor basis is for steel steering was quite the same <coughs> around the center. Now we are more direct in sports steering and the ratio increase is smoother. So if you're steering into the progression at around 45 degrees of steering wheel angle, it's much too much or less, or much or less, but it's very, very smooth. And I think you all have the experience with the 320 diesel and 330i, which both have the M sports suspension and the very sports steering. Available also for the sports package are the M sports brakes which are not only nicely colored in blue, but they are all ways with the four pistons. They have a hands extra hydraulic setup, and we even made the pedal ratio of the brake boost more direct to give you a more sportier pedal feel, shorter pedal travel, and more forces. The 330i has been driving so far, had those uh, M Sports brakes, and the white 320 diesel, and the normal. So there is quite a difference in those. Those are basically three of the options we have. And there is one more very smart and very nice piece we have here. Michael already mentioned it. It's the electronically controlled limited slip differential for the rear axle. This is now available as an option for 330i and 320, uh, 330i and 330 diesel. And it is in every M340i, whether rear wheel or all wheel driven, both use it. The system is quite simple again with the electronic motor. We go over the, uh, uh, the, the, the gearing and we push those clutches together, hence uh, combining the left and the right wheel. For traction, it's quite simple and obvious because if you're on slippery roads with one side and on a uh, grip road to the other side, you can lock together and gain traction. That's obvious. But also, as it's electronically controlled, you can close the clutch in every driving situation. For example, in half an hour you've been out on the track, there are quite narrow cars. Normally, if you push on the throttle while cornering, you get too much wheels to be on the inner side and gain no more proportion at the outer side. You could break it away, which would be a waste of energy, but using this clutch and transferring the slip of the outer wheel and the torque of the outer wheel to the inside, the outer wheel pushes you into the corner, giving you some kind of agility. So this is an excellent tool, helping us for the smiles in our face during application, and you as customers for driving, for handling, and agility. But also for stability. For example, if you are going high speeds on the motorway, if you have to do a sudden lane change, emergency lane change, we can see it in the steering wheel angle velocity, basically, it's the first hint that the driver wants to exit somewhere, and you're electronically controlled, you can close the clutch even before the car is leaning on the other side and start the oil reaction, and if you are closing the clutch, linking the wheels together, it's kind of a yaw damping. So it's a kind of stability assist, which helps you for not only agility, but also stability. And as it is electronically controlled, you do not need to stand on the throttle to do so. You can do it in every situation you want. So, one of my favorite tools now in the new fleet series, which is, as I say, optional for 330i in the sports suspension or sports package and the 330 diesel. Let's come to the M340i. The top of the motors always meets the top of the sporty chassis. Every M340i includes the M Sport suspension. With the M Sport suspension, as I said, always comes the variable sports steering. And also, the M Sports brakes are included in every M340i. Of course, you can buy the adaptive dampers, which are a little further developed than the predecessor. They now allow us to do more volume control and faster switching in the control, but the principle is quite the same as the predecessor. As another option, we could, of course, 
offer you 19-inch mixed tires for the M340i. We are starting in the M340i with the 18-inch mixed tires. And for all those who say, well, that's not enough yet, we offer after-sales parts, the end performance parts, for example, different options for wheels, tires, rims, and even the red brakes, the drill brakes, or the uh, carbon uh, mirror caps, or a different uh, steering wheel. Those options will be displayed to you down in the pit lane, where is an exhibition of a car just before you enter the cars for the racetrack. So, I think, speaking of driving dynamics, this was a short insight into how we develop the car, how it should feel like the ultimate sports sedan. The colleagues already ordered an effortless fast car. And now comes the experience on the race track to you. And what is in between you and the race track is just Lars giving you the instructions of how we will proceed on the race track. <laughs>